In this video, we're going to compare DirectX 12 with DirectX 11. And not only that, we're going to be in VR. And we're starting with quality mode. Here at London City, I'm using the same aircraft, same weather, same everything. Even my room temperature is exactly... No, I'm joking, folks. I didn't go that far. But this is pretty much the best I can do it. I'm no scientist. But this is the performance I'm getting. That's the key thing here. Every system is different. I'm using a Stormforce 10900K with an RTX 3090. It's also important to note that I'm upscaling the resolution slightly in the OpenXR development tool. That will have a huge bearing on the frame rate, but it will have a huge bearing on the clarity as well. And that is something I recommend in my latest VR settings video, which I'll link in the description below. So for me personally, as you can see here, DirectX 12 and DirectX 11 are very, very close. And in fact, in some cases, one outdoes the other. So it's very difficult to sort of draw a line under this conclusion here. In fact, please do let me know in the comments what do you think. So we're just about to go over the O2 Arena. I remember seeing Rob Zombie there once and I skipped school to see it. But anyway, enough of that. So we're now external view here and performance is very similar on my system. If anything, I think DirectX 12 slightly edges it and I can certainly feel that in VR. Right, we're back at London City again. This time we are using DLSS set at performance. I remember my OpenXR development tool is set at 150%. By the way, I'm not using the OpenXR toolkit because that just complicates things even further. I want to keep everything pretty much identical. And if you're wondering, I did fly these flights you're seeing now about six, seven times. In fact, the first time I did it, I accidentally had the OpenXR toolkit running, which made DirectX 11 like really shoot ahead. So that's worth noting. If you want to use the OpenXR toolkit, it definitely does make a difference, particularly with favorited rendering. Anyway, here we are again, heading to the O2 Arena and the Financial District. I'm thinking again that DirectX 12 is edging it here, folks. Now, I know people in the comments of my last video are saying the complete opposite. But for me, it really is the better performer. And it, you can definitely tell in VR as well. One more thing I did notice, and that's the clouds. They seem a little bit less pixelated and I can up my settings to ultra without experiencing micro stutters, which I often do with live weather with DirectX 11. But again, that's just my sort of findings. Whether that's the same for you or not, I don't know. So we're in the external view here of the beautiful Flysimware Cessna 414. Apologies to Sven, I know you're watching this buddy. I am ragging the pants off the engine on this thing. So it's gonna need some maintenance. <laughs> right, last test now folks. I thought I would just use TAA mode. So bear in mind now, I am super sampling above the native resolution of the Reverb G2, which I'm using here, which I forgot to mention. And even so, DirectX 12 is just hanging on there at 30 frames per second at London whilst recording. And that's another thing, folks. Recording really makes a difference to frame rate. You get about five to six frames less when using sort of, you know, OBS. And in this case, I'm using uh, Shadow Play. So I hope in some way that's been useful to you guys. For me personally, the verdict is quite obvious. I think DirectX 12 is starting to show its stuff, particularly with this new NVIDIA driver. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.